Coming up on this episode, we introduce you to a new narrator as we talk with Silas Whitaker, who has recently released his very first audiobooks. Welcome to episode 333 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of gay romance fiction. I'm Will, and with me, as always, is my co-host and husband, Jeff Adams. Hello, Rainbow Romance readers. It is great to have you back for another episode of the podcast. Now, this week's interview is really special. Not only do we get to meet Silas, but it's a behind-the-scenes look at how one of Jeff's favorite books found its way into audio. And incidentally, you got to listen to an advanced copy of How to Be Remy Cameron. Oh, yes, I did. And it made me so very happy. And you're right, too. This interview is pretty special. Not only do I talk to Silas, but we're also joined by Remy Cameron's author, Julian Winters. The story of how Silas came to work on this book is unlike any narrator origin story we've had on the show before. This one involves not only Silas and Julian, but also Kurt Graves and me. I'm not going to spoil the interview, so you'll just have to stick around to see how all of us fit together. And before we get to that interview, I have to gush about how to be Remy Cameron on audio. The audio releases this week, and it is simply extraordinary. I reviewed Remy back in episode 205 in September of 2019, shortly after the book came out. And like Will said, it's one of my very favorites. Julian does such an incredible job of capturing Remy as he's having to write this essay about who he is. The problem is that he's not totally sure how all the labels that are attached to him actually fit together, or if they're even totally accurate. And then there's on top of that what it means to him that he is an adopted child. Beyond Remy trying to figure himself out, there's also a fun mystery going on at the school as homecoming approaches, and Remy also gets a super cute romance. Silas nails in every single way the narration of this book. Every emotional nuance is captured perfectly. And there's a lot because Remy's got a lot on his mind. One of the things I loved about the book originally was its first person present tense point of view. And now that it's read by Silas, that's even more powerful. Silas does more than get Remy right though. The complete cast of characters have exactly the voice I would want for them. In the interview, you'll hear us talk about Julian's favorite scene of the audiobook, which just also happens to be Silas's. This scene made me cry when I read it in the book, and I swear Silas made the waterworks flow even more than originally, and I was even prepared for that this time. It's awesome that Remy Camera is among the first book Silas has narrated. It clearly shows what he's capable of. It's also great that readers have a new way to experience this sublime story that is How to Be Remy Cameron. If you've already read the book, you should definitely give the audiobook a go to revisit it, and if you haven't had the pleasure of this story yet, Pick up the audiobook and hear Remy brought beautifully to life. Now, another book I want to mention before we get into our conversation is the anthology Black Boy Joy, which are a set of middle grade stories and poems written by 17 acclaimed black authors. Joy is exactly what each of these stories are infused with, even the ones that tackle difficult topics. I talked to Julian about his story, which is called The Legendary Lawrence Cobbler, And I won't go into this particular story right now because you're going to hear all about in the interview how much I was delighted by this story. I also want to highlight a few others from this extraordinary collection. George M. Johnson's The Gender Reveal is really special as it tells the story of Malcolm, who is turning 13. Malcolm has things to say, maybe, during the birthday party, but they're scary things since it's not totally clear what the reaction of family and friends might be. This is a beautiful story about embracing who you are and the strength and courage to share that with everyone. Epic Adventure by Jay Coles, who, by the way, his new book, Things We Couldn't Say, also releases this week and happens to be super high up on my to-read list, offers a super sweet story of a boy who loves hearing his grandfather's war stories and gets to take a flight with his grandpa before the plane gets sold. It's a simple story but it is full of so much wonder and enjoyment that I swear I smiled the entire time I read it. Extinct by Dean Atta is a poem that embraces the joy of learning, the happiness of friends and family, and the importance of capturing and remembering the past. And I have to say, I don't often read poems because it's just not something that I do, but I really enjoyed this one and just the, the cadence of the way that the poem flowed. It was really special. Julian Randall's story, but also jazz, is one of the stories that looks at the reality that far too many young black men and boys are being laid to rest after shootings. 
This story of two boys with a talent for writing lyrics and who are asked to create a song to bring joy and hope back to their neighborhood's congregation is incredibly powerful, truly showing the power of joy and where it can spring from. And lastly, I have to shout out a three-part story that runs throughout the book, and it comes from the anthology's editor, Kwame Mimbala. It's called The Groit of Grover Street. I'm not going to say too much about it because this story has to be experienced, but I will say it's pure magic as it weaves a tale of restoring balance by replenishing joy. So do yourself a favor and pick up the Black Boy Joy Anthology. Every one of the stories is guaranteed to bring you some joy, happiness, and wonder. And now on to our interview with Silas and Julian. We find out how Silas went from doing a reading at a bookstore and how that led to narrating the audio for How to Be Remy Cameron. We also talk about some of the gay romances he's already done, including co-narration that Silas has done with Kurt. And of course, Julian and I talk about his story in Black Boy Joy, and we find out what's coming up next for him. I am so happy to welcome back to the podcast, Julian Winters, and to welcome for the very first time a new narrator on our audiobook scene, Silas Whitaker. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> And we get to celebrate something I was oh so happy about, How to Be Remy Cameron, which is one of my very favorite books from 2019, has finally come out in audio, in a tremendous audio edition, no less. <sighs> Julia, before we get into all the audio stuff, for those who haven't maybe picked up Remy Cameron yet, and what is wrong with you people if you haven't, <laughs> tell folks a little right. bit about what this <laughs> book's about. It's so funny that you said 2019, because I'm like, how long ago did I write this book and it come out? I don't even remember my old school pitch I had, but I'll do my thing. <laughs> Here's the back um, of the book. I can hold it up to the camera. Yeah, you right, can right. Let me read the back yeah. of the book. <laughs> how to be Remy Cameron is about a 17-year-old queer adopted black boy by the name of Remy Cameron. He's semi-popular at school, has a great group of friends, is very much in love with his family, and kind of has this goal set in mind about what uh, university he wants to go to once he graduates high, high school. The plane's going to take to get there until he gets an assignment in his AP Lit class that he has to write an essay about who he is. And that begins a series of questions about who Remy thinks he is in the eyes of his family, in the eyes of his friends, in the eyes of society and how they look at him. And then it also sends him off on another journey because he's adopted into how much of that part of his life does he want to know and how much is he willing to explore in order to feel like he knows himself. And the book is very much about stereotypes and labels and how we identify and the things that we get to claim and the things that people put on us that we have to carry around and labels and whatnot. It's also like a super cute romance in there too that I thoroughly enjoy writing. You remembered all that really well because yes, that's exactly <laughs> what <laughs> like, that was great that was perfect <laughs> there's a great story how Remy came together on audio after these couple of years yes. and Silas I first heard about you because of Kurt Graves Kurt and I have yeah. been friends for a while I became a big fanboy of his back when he did TJ Clune's Wolf Song gosh that must be like five years ago now and he mentioned one day that he had started working with you. And how did you and Kurt come to know each other and to get you into a spot where you were coming on the scene as a narrator? Yeah, it was just a kind of a strange story. It all happened pretty quick. So basically, I was doing this uh, book reading at this new bookstore that had opened up uh, not too far away from where I live. And I was just reading for a couple of new books that were coming out. And Kurt just happened to be there. And at the end of everything, I was just milling around the store. And he just walks up to me, hands me his card. And is like, I, I think that you could do something. And he was willing to help me and show me the ropes. And it just kind of went from there. I mean, it's been amazing working with Kurt. Absolutely amazing. And he's got interesting background, too, because he also teaches forensics. So not only is he a narrator uh -huh. in his own right, but he teaches speech yeah. and, and things that go with it, too. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. He just loves teaching. Like, every time we're having a conversation, I think I learned at least, like, five new things. Just always. And then 
one of the things that he showed me, in case I knew anybody who might be looking for a narrator, was your website. And among the initial like little readings that you'd done there to be your demo reel was at least some of the first chapter of Remy Cameron. And I was like, yep, it oh was my gosh, this is so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I remember it was like the very first chapter, first the like paragraph or something like that. And I remember it because Kurt, of course, was telling me, it's like, well, you got to get samples, get one from like every genre that you can pretty much. I was just perusing the internet and I saw this part of the book and I was just reading and it's a part between Remy and Rio. I absolutely love their chemistry honestly i love whenever they have a moment together perfect it's always gold so i was like i i gotta have this for a sample and then i immediately went julia you have to hear this <laughs> <laughs> is there any way this could be your remy audiobook i remember that email and i was like what one i was like who who out of all the books thought to use my book as a demo <laughs> reading then i was like okay i'm just gonna check this out and i heard it and it's still so wild to me now remy's this voice that's lived inside my head i don't think i've did a lot of readings for remy when it first came out like a lot of readings in public and whatnot remy's voice was just living in my head for years and years and i heard the sample and i was like how is this possible because silas had nailed and I mean, nailed exactly how I heard Remy in my head. And I freaked out. And I was so floored by hearing this. It's just a little clip and saying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wouldn't it be so cool if something happened with this? As soon as I heard the sample, I emailed my publisher's marketing manager, Candace Miller. And I was like, you have to hear this. You have to hear this. If we ever do anything with Remy, if anyone ever wants to do anything with me, this is who I would want to read for him. She heard it and she loved it. And she was like, I'll get back to you on this. Uh, we'll see what happens kind of thing. You hear these things in publishing all across um, different industries and whatnot, where it's like, we'll get back to you on things. And you know what that means. It's like, maybe, but also a strong, possibly something's not going to happen. If anything, this little clip right here will always be my part of Remy that I get to have outside of what's already lived in my head kind of have you listened to the whole book? Yes, I have. I haven't listened to the whole book yet because um, I haven't had to. I did get to listen to the initial recordings of it. I was listening to it to take notes and whatnot. And I remember mm. um, so many parts where I couldn't take notes because I was either smiling so hard, laughing so hard. And I distinctively remember crying at least three times. And I would text Candace, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, I can't take notes on this part because I'm crying. and I can't, you know, give you the technical feedback you're looking for because I'm just so overwhelmed to hear my words spoken in the way that I would want a reader to receive them. Yeah, and I remember some of those parts too, like especially the crying ones. I had to stop recording for a couple of times. Just the way that you had them, specifically the, I think it's between Remy and his dad at one point towards the end of the story. I was reading for that and I went and I had to hit pause on my record and I just had to take a breath. I was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> when I tell you, you nailed that scene like to its bare bones. And I just, yeah, I was really just sitting there, tears just rolling down my face um, because I remember writing it and wanting to invoke a lot of emotion, but I never thought it would be in a way that when I heard it back, because, you know, when you're writing a book, you read it so many times that it just becomes words and you kind of lose some of the things that you are putting into it because you're really trying to make sure it's okay, technically perfect before I send it out for readers. And you just brought back so many emotions I felt writing that scene for the first time. And it was chef's kiss, like, beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Before this interview actually airs in the show, I'm going to be talking about my perceptions of the audio. But as we're sitting here recording this, I haven't gotten to that part yet, but I know which scene it is because I know what's at the end of the book. That's the one I've been like, uh, this is going to be the thing that's going to make me need some Kleenex before I get to it. Now, I know that Julian's yeah. cried, then I'm like, well, I'm just going to be done. Yeah, listen, do not listen to that scene while driving in a car is all I'm saying. Not recommended. 
I've had those issues before where I'm just trucking along, listening to a book, and then it's like, oh my gosh, I might need to pull over because I can't see anymore. <laughs> oh, too many for me. Had it crossed your mind, Silas, when you met Kurt to even consider narrating? At kind of where I was vaguely planning on ending up. So like a year before I met Kurt, I had been working jobs here and there, a lot of like factory work. I ended up working at my father's company for a pretty long time. And it just got to a point where I got to do something more creative. I got to do something more artistic. And I decided that I was just going to sign up for an acting class. And it was just a one-on-one thing. I met with this teacher. I thought that I had a bit of talent from however much I can believe that. But she signed me up for uh, just a little local Christmas play. And that was a ton of fun to do as well. And then the person who ran the uh, company that was doing the play actually was the one who told me about the uh, book reading at the bookstore. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'll do that. That's kind of where I wanted to end up being anyway. Because acting's just not quite for me. It's just too many eyes really staring. But I love audiobooks. I listen to so many audiobooks. That's basically what I listen to while I'm at work. And just the emotion and being able to like go into like other worlds and be that voice that brings those worlds to life just always fascinated me, always interested me. So when Kurt came up to me after my reading, I was just like, I can't believe this is happening, of course. And it just went off from there. Honestly, this whole past two years have just felt unreal. And it's hard to believe it's that long ago because I was trying to track back in my head when I heard this from Kurt, and it was sometime last summer, last fall in there somewhere, because we were definitely in pandemic times when I heard about it. And I'm like, well, that's pretty amazing. It's the old school getting discovered off the street somewhere. <laughs> exactly. I, I cannot believe all the things that had to happen for this to be happening. And I should have asked you, because... Julian kind of cited that what I think is his favorite moment in the recording. What's your favorite moment that you recorded in that book? Honestly, I think it's going to have to be at the end of the book when he's talking with his dad, because honestly, that that hit so hard because it just reminded me of my family in a way, like my dad. And he's a very uh, stoic man, but uh, he's always willing to talk. And sometimes you kind of look at your father, I mean, mean, some people at least, and you forget that, yeah, they're always there to talk to you. Like no matter what, no matter how old you get, you always feel like you have to handle your problems on your own. And that's not true. So yeah, that moment for sure. I love that moment. Well said. I think that's similar to how the moment kind of resonated for me too, thinking about my parents and things like that. So yeah, absolutely. How did you prepare to record? Because it's one thing to do demo reels with Remy and Rio and just a couple people, but there's a few people running around in this book. You know, there there are quite a few. (laughs) I would definitely have to say coming up with voices for every character it was a little bit of a challenge for me. But honestly, I'll read the book once or over, just so that I kind of have a inkling of where it's going, what the characters might be going through, and then as I'm going, I'll kind of think ahead of what's going to be coming up and just kind of play around with the voices and how maybe I would kind of imagine that they would sound. And of course, Candace was also a big help with that. Whenever I had a question, I could just email her and be like, hey, do you want to just take a quick listen to this? Or if she thought that maybe that wasn't the right direction, she would definitely let me know. I definitely say the voices were kind of a little bit more tough for me to get through, especially because, I mean, they're all in high school too. So... It, it's it's hard to tell. Like my favorite parts, uh, Remy throughout the book, his voice will crack. Yeah, oh god, that oh, uh, <laughs> that just brought me back too. But I felt so bad, and I apologize to any future narrators for my books because 
when I'm writing a book, I just, I love an ensemble cast. I love having like a lot of characters and the way they interconnect and whatnot. But as I was listening to the audiobook, I was like, oh my gosh, what if you put this poor person through? Because there's like seven <laughs> characters in this one scene at the lunch table and he's got to like flip voices between every other sentence and whatnot. And it's, it was a lesson for me that maybe less is more <laughs> when hey. you're thinking about a book <laughs> Absolutely not. I want you to take that thought, throw it away, because that is all part of the job. I, I needed to be able to do that. And it was wonderful practice for me. I loved it. And getting to really know all the individual characters and really get into that feel and just what they would be thinking. So absolutely no. Keep keep the characters in the books. Keep go keep going. Write as many as you want. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> if any narrator ever gives you grief over that, Julian, you've now got this as proof that you got permission from a narrator to do that. Yeah. It'll be forever <laughs> recorded now. <laughs> but Julian, I have felt the same way when I was prepping the the Winger series for Kurt. I'm going through and like, here's all these characters. And I'm also trying to say this character from book one comes back in book four. So make it a voice you can actually refer back to later. Right. But then I'm like, I put a lot of people on these books. <laughs> he did make me apologize for it, though, so that was all good. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I've learned for sure. Whenever I do any characters, as soon as I'm done doing that first one, and I know that's what I want them to sound like, cut them right out. Save that for reference later, because I can't tell you. Like earlier on, whenever I'd be reading other books and I come across another character that maybe I haven't seen in like, couple chapters that is the worst having to go back and trying to find out I was like okay what voice did I give them what did I do was there a voice in Remy that was particularly difficult to find I can't say there was one that was extremely difficult in particular I had a little bit of problems with oh, and I'm so awful I can't remember the character's name Remy's older friend who's on the I believe he was on the football team Brooke. Brooke. Yes. Yeah. Brooke. At first, I don't know what I was doing. The first voice I gave for him was some sort of surfer dude. <laughs> and Candace came back to me and it's like, and she was so nice about it. She was just like, okay, I see what you're doing here, but I don't think this is really the voice for him. Yeah, I had to agree with that. So that one just took me a little bit more to get into and get to, but once I figured out how I really thought that character would feel and sound, it became a lot easier. I mean, once once you get into there, it's just smooth sailing from there. Maybe save the surfer character if you get to do the the audio for Summer of Everything, since that's in Santa oh, Monica. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. You still have that clip somewhere? <laughs> I know exactly who that should be. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you've done a few other audiobooks. As we record this, you've got four other ones out there. You've done some narration for J.A. Rock and Lisa Henry, Susie Hawk and Krista Crown, Nev Wilder, Jocelyn Drake, and Rinda Elliott. So in a short time, you've also experienced a number of subgenres in here, too, within gay romance. First of all, has it been fun or has it been kind of a challenge to hop around as you're kind of getting settled into the narration business? No, honestly, it has been so much fun. I did not expect to be in this world that I'm currently in, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. I mean, every book that I've read so far has just been absolutely great. It's been a great experience, and I honestly, I cannot thank Kurt enough. I mean, he's really helped me with introducing me to some authors and other people. And I mean, I love this. I love all the genres I've had. I really have not had a problem uh, bouncing back and forth. Because you've done contemporary now and you've done paranormal too. So you've already experienced the world of shifters a little bit even. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. I will say that was an interesting one. I, I, I was not prepared for that one, but hey, it was, I still had such a blast with that. <laughs> That's awesome. And you've worked with Kurt now too, because two of these books you've done, yeah. he's a co-narrator with you. How was it to split up the narration? That's been very interesting. I really do enjoy, especially working with Kurt. It's a lot different of a challenge because instead of me recording every bit of the book, I mean, it's just from a certain character's point of view. 
So I have to make sure that whatever emotions I'm putting into this character, I have to keep in mind of everything that's happened in the chapters that I didn't record. I have to always keep that in the back of my head. I mean, a lot of the times, I think in the one that I just got done doing, some chapters will end and begin just switching characters just like that. And I have to be able to fall right into that character and be able to experience the emotions that they're growing through from something that just happened that I didn't record. <laughs> How's it been having to do things like whoever Kurt's portraying, you're going to have to voice that character when it's in the chapters that you're in. How are you two kind of balancing, like, this is what my characters are sounding like, and then this is how I'm going to yeah, match what your characters are doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, and he's helped me a lot. I mean, he, he held my hand through the entire process. What we've basically been doing is he'll take like an excerpt from a character that will be showing up throughout the book and as something that I can just listen to now, he did the voice. And then I try my best to get as close as I can to how he made the character sound. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but it was quite an experience and... I was able to make it work. I mean, he was really there through the whole time. And honestly, communication is also key too when it comes to that. Whenever I came across a new character, I would always record, send him a sample of that one before I went any farther. And that worked perfectly. So it was just instant back and forth communication with that. Yeah, and I guess that's what you have to do too because there's going to be characters who introduce first in your chapters that then he's going to pick up at some point down the line yeah so have you built the whole studio in your house yet i know because kurt has one that he's had in his apartment he's had in his house for a while and then it moves into an office space for him and have you built all this stuff out well i am putting together my studio currently but i do have a very nice booth that is currently in my basement and is, i will not be moving from my basement because that thing Oh my goodness, it was heavy. I cannot believe it. Given what you've worked on already, Silas, what would you like to be working on? Like, like what's your wheelhouse and your joy? Like, I really want to narrate this kind of book. I love anything sci-fi, fantasy, stuff like that. I've got the whole like Star Wars t-shirt right here. So, I mean, those are the books that I usually I go to. But I will say that being introduced to the LGBTQ uh, book community and audio community, it's just been so awesome. Like I, I've read books, listened to books that, I mean, I never really would have looked at and I feel so much better for it. They're all just been fantastic so far. I love being in this community, in this world. So yeah, sci-fi people need to come after you now that they'll yes. know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of sci-fi romance out there. There's an entire queer sci-fi website and community out there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, Julian, while we've got you here, we really have to talk about your story that's in Black Boy Joy, the recently released anthology that actually has made the New York Times bestseller list, which is so incredibly wonderful. The legendary Lawrence Cobbler just touched my heart so, so much. Tell us a little bit about that story and where its inspiration came from. Gosh, I really, it's funny because I remember when Kwame, the editor, Kwame Mbalia is the editor for the anthology and also has three really great stories in it. And I remember when he messaged me and said that he had this concept in what I'd be interested in doing. And I was like, oh my gosh, one, I've never written middle grade ever. Not even like for fun. Two, what kind of story would I want to tell that encapsulates Black Boy Joy? And I just remember growing up and wishing there were more stories with a father-son kind of story where it involved someone who was dealing with identity and who they are and whatnot, and just more joyful ones, more stories that made you feel like, okay, I can do this kind of thing. And I was like, oh, well, Got to do that. Got to make sure it's like a generational thing because someone who grew up in a Black family where everyone was in the kitchen all the time, I knew I wanted to have some something like that included in there. And then from there, I remember doing research for middle grade novels and trying to find ones that featured queer Black characters. And I only found one. 
I, 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 I researched and researched. I was, I was on all these different websites. I was like, where do I find one? I could only find one. And that's what really sparked it for me was I knew that was a story I had to tell because I knew I wanted to see more of that. And that's what I also love about this collection is that it definitely features Black voices from, from across the board. Yeah, there's so many amazing authors in here. I'm kind of spending one essay a day just to like take them in because they're really short. Each one of them is you yeah. know really short and easy to sit down, spend a few minutes with it. Yeah, we only had 3,000 words, so they are all very short. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's a challenge, too. I didn't realize they all fit that very narrow window of words. 3,000. Wow. Yeah. Kudos to all of the authors, then, because I know I have a hard time writing that small, that tightly to tell that much of a story, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a new challenge. I love that you've incorporated food, which ties back to Remy's so well. I could see oh. Remy wanting to make these very recipes <laughs> alongside <laughs> of his dad and his sister. <laughs> yes, yes. And then and his dad inevitably uh, messing it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Do you have recipes also? Because I kind of want to eat this stuff between the peanut butter <laughs> cookies that are hinted at and the cobbler. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the cobbler, I Get actually had <laughs> to spend time with my mom in the kitchen because she makes this great cobbler that like the, the whole family loves and I had never made it with her. So as part of the research of the story, I was like, okay, we're going to sit down and you're going to make your cobbler and I'm going to do it side by side with you and see if I can get this and learn this. It was just a wonderful experience because I've always spent time with her in the kitchen. And she's passed down so many of her um, recipes to me kind of thing. And so I definitely made sure to be as accurate as possible with the depiction in the story of that recipe. Okay, if we ever meet up in person, I want you to make me some cobbler, please. I, I <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I have to compliment the, this one line in the book that resonated with me so hard, and it's not a spoiler for anything, but it is this line that says, fear is nothing but forgetting everything is all right. I actually had to sit there with that for a minute because that's so profound of a statement, especially in the times that we live in right now. Right, yeah. I remember just writing down notes what I wanted to include in the story, and I wanted that moment between them because Javon is dealing with his own fears, but his dad is too. And I wanted to play on how parents always instill these wise words to you and how sometimes you can turn it back around on them. And I don't know how I came up with it. I was just like, fear. And I just was looking at the word, and I was like, ah, oh, I can't turn to something. And when I came up with it, I was like, I really love this because it, it is so true that our fears are usually from a space where we've forgotten that everything is all right. Kind of. Thing. Yeah, I wanted a plaque Ooh. somewhere on my wall just to be able to, <laughs> to look on it periodically um, and go and take that breath. You're like, yes, everything is really all right, and I'm being a little irrational right now, or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for that. <laughs> no, thank you for bringing that line up. So I'd love to know from both of you something you've read or listened to recently uh, that you would recommend to our listeners. And Salas, I'll come to you first. Yeah, sure. So I haven't actually been listening to anything recently, but one of the books I've been reading is, I don't know if you ever heard of Mercedes Lackey, To Light a Candle. It's a fantasy book. It's a little bit on the older side, but definitely down my wheelhouse. It's got Unicorns, elves, dragons, can't go wrong with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> otherwise, other book, if you love a quick read, can't go wrong with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Absolutely love that. I read that from time to time. I will never not just push that book. But yeah, that's, that's about it. That's all that's going on with the books from me. See, this is all the more reason why we need Silas to read The Summer of Everything. Because mentioning The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it's mentioned in the book. Just meant to be. I'm oh, what is this? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I see emails to Candy happening shortly after this yeah. interview. <laughs> Standing by my phone. <laughs> and Julian, you cost me so much of a book budget because you're so active on Twitter saying, This is great. This is great. This is great. What are you going to tell our listeners that they should be picking up? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I am making up for years and years of not 
enjoying reading. So I'm sorry to everyone where I just like bombard you with book recs. But what have I just finished? And it's not out yet, so I'm just going to say the pre-order. But I just finished um, Adib Karam's Kiss and Tell. And it's so good. It is so good. It is a young adult a book about a boy band. And one of the main character is an out gay boy band member. And it's about his journey through what that's like to be in the spotlight. And it tackles so many things within and outside of the queer community that I just like spot on enjoy. And as far as audiobooks, one that I go to like, continuously is Charming as a Verb by Ben Phillip and it's narrated by James Foley. He does such an amazing job narrating that book and you fall in love with the characters and the story so quickly because he is so good at telling the story in a way that makes you feel like like he wrote the book. So those are two that I definitely suggest people. Fantastic. And then what's coming up next? Julian, I know we we had to go through summer without a book from you this year. But I you, had, know. you have had some sh short stories out there, which has been great. But yes. what is the big thing coming in 2022? I have my next book coming out March 15th, 2022. Oh, right springtime, yay. Year. A little earlier. Yes. I know. It's my first spring book. Um, it's called Right Where I Left You. Super excited about it. It is the geeky, queer book of my dreams. Seriously, because it deals with not only friendships and things like social anxiety and separation anxiety, but also deals with representation in media and comic books and things like that. It also deals with complicated families and it's got this super wonderful romance happening. It's like almost like a slow burn, but also did you not see it all along kind of thing. So I really enjoyed writing that and I'm really hoping people are just going to fall in love. Excellent. And Salas, what can you tease us about what audiobooks are on the way from you? Well, I don't have anything coming down just yet. Like I've been working on the dual narrations with Kurt. That'll be the newest one that's coming out. It's the Blind Warrior. But besides that, I will be continuing to work on that series with Kurt. But I don't really have any projects at the moment. Okay, author, you, you heard that, Silas is available. So hit him up. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> and how can people keep up with you guys online? Silas, where can people find you and, and get in contact if they want to uh, get engaged with you as a narrator? Uh, well, I have my Instagram, my Twitter. Those are the ones that... Um, starting to get into the most i'm so bad at it but you can follow me on instagram it's narrator underscore silas w and then twitter is just at whitaker underscore silas my website is silaswhitaker.com and that's just going to have my samples a little bit of info on me and that's what i've got cool and everybody beware uh, of julian's twitter it's it, i tell you your book budget will regret it <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it will. I often think sometimes I should just start a separate book blogging account, but I just I can't. On Twitter, um, you can find me at Julian W underscore writes, because unfortunately Julian Winters was taken. And on Instagram, you can find me at Winters Julian, but you can find my website, julianwinters.com. Fantastic. We will link to everything we've talked about in our show notes so people can find the books and the websites and everything else. Silas and Julian, thank you so much for being here. So excited that Remy's out on audio. And Silas, it's great to have you in the narrator community now. Yep. Thanks for having me, honestly. Yep. <laughs> I love being here. This episode's transcript has been brought to you by our community on Patreon. If you'd like to read the conversation for yourself, head on over to the show notes page for this episode at biggayfictionpodcast.com. Don't forget, the show notes page also has links to everything that we've talked about in this episode. And on the show notes page, you'll find links to the audiobooks that are available from Libro.fm, including How to Be Remy Cameron. Libro.fm is the place that when you buy an audiobook, you're also supporting a local bookstore of your choice. Listeners to the Big Gay Fiction Podcast have the opportunity to get a two-month audiobook membership for the price of one. For details and to take advantage of that offer, simply go to biggayfictionpodcast.com slash librofm. That's L-I-B-R-O-F-M. And thanks again to Silas and Julian for coming by to talk to us about the audio release of How to Be Remy Cameron. 
I cannot wait to find out what else is going to come from Silas after this initial batch of books. I think he's going to be a really exciting narrator for all of us to listen to. And just in case you were wondering, that particular line out of Julian's Black Boy Joy story that I said I wanted to have a plaque on my wall, well, I actually did put that very sentence up on my wall, even bought a special board to put it on. So I get to look at that every single day now. All right. I think that'll do it for now. Coming up next on Monday in episode 334, we've got a lot of recommendations for you as we welcome back Jay from Joyfully Jay and Lisa from The Novel Approach. Yes, Lisa and Jay are back, and as always, you'll need to hang on to your book budgets. We've got something for everyone coming up in that book chat. On behalf of Jeff and myself, we want to thank you so much for listening, and hope that you'll join us again soon for more discussions about the kind of stories that we all love, the big gay fiction kind. Until then, keep turning those pages and keep reading. Big Gay Fiction Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more shows you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Production assistance by Tyson Greenan. Original theme music by Daryl Banner. Thank you.